first Friday in the new month, and that means it's time to welcome Chris Hall into the studio with his suggestions for what to read. Hello there, Chris. Good morning, Simon. Well, it's, a, it's good to have you here. Did you get some new spectacles? <laughs> I did. I, they're, they're, I broke my other one. Oh, well, these ones are very nice. I know <laughs> that the listeners can't see you, but they will be able to see you when you get <laughs> uh, it up on the website. Thank you. I'm looking good. I sure ever uh, Yeah, and I, I can I can second that motion. Uh, so <laughs> you've got a, a, a big stack of books here uh, this month. Mm-hmm. Um, we're going to start with a book that hasn't officially been released yet, but you, as an insider, you've, <laughs> you've got a, a, an advanced copy Let's start with this uh, recollection. Yeah, we uh, as insiders get advanced readers' copies, they're called, that gets us prepared for for a book's release. Um, So this book is called um, Recollections of My Non-Existence. It's by Rebecca Solnit. Rebecca Solnit's our author of the month for March, Mm. so it's a good time to talk about her. She wrote a book about 15 years ago, I think. It's early in my time at the bookstore. Um, called Wanderlust, A History of Walking, and it really captured our attention. It was a real staff favorite at the time. She followed that up with uh, a book called The Field Guide to Getting Lost, which Hmm. I just like as a concept. Um, And so she's written many books uh, since, uh, 17 or 14, depending on which uh, which authority you go to. Um, As she's written, she's become more and more an activist, more and more um, both uh, environmental human rights issues, um, but also feminist issues. And so her last few books have really become uh, uh, become known, I guess, as a real figure in the Me Too movement, but feminism in general. Uh, she's uh, written books like Men Explain Things to Me, uh, the whole concept of mansplaining, uh-huh. uh, Whose Story Is This, um, and a, a number of others. Uh, this new book is a memoir, so it goes back to her early adulthood. She uh, is a poor... Uh, student just coming out of being uh, of college and wanting to become a writer so she um, moves into a, this great apartment but it's in a black neighborhood so it's in a poor neighborhood she learns a lot from living there she's poor this is in san francisco I this think? is in san yeah. francisco yeah. sorry yes and um and then and she walks a lot which explains the uh the early books um but she grows up as a single young woman in a big city, and she uh, trying to make a, a name for herself, trying to find a voice, uh, but being discouraged from speaking, from from uh, challenging the norms, uh, for, and even in uh, as she points out, even feeling safe in the world, hmm. she's not uh, she's not given that luxury. So it's very interesting, a very meditative, reflective kind of book. It's it's easy to read and. And um, she carries you along, but uh, but yeah, she's um, she's got a lot of uh, lot to say. It sounds like a, a memoir as as well as a, an argument. Then, right? yeah, 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 it kind of explains where she comes, where she's coming from. Uh, so so from that that latest offer uh, from from Rebecca Solnit, who is the the featured artist this month at McNally, um, we're going to turn to a, a past uh, a Man Booker Prize winner, mm-hmm. um, a best selling author. Uh, this 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 is the latest offering from uh, Anne Enright. Yes, exactly. It's called Actress New Novel. Uh, she won the Booker Prize, as you say, for The Gathering. It's a few years ago now. I've read everything since. Hmm. I just love uh, uh, Anne Enright's uh, writing. She's written The Forgotten Waltz since then, The Green Road. I re- recommend all of them. Um, this novel, and new one, is uh, about Nora and her mother, Catherine O'Dell. And Catherine O'Dell was a was an Irish theater legend, but she got into movies. She was London's West End. She's hmm. uh, in New York City and then out to Hollywood. So she's she's done it all. And this is growing about g- growing up in that world with this mother that uh, is a star. And uh, and so, but it's it's n- 1970s. So it's got all of this casual sexism happening and it's kind of shabbiness, like people not being very nice to each other. And and so it's not. It's certainly below the the glamour. Uh, the world, this world at least, is unkind to this mother-daughter relationship. They have some trouble. There's some secrets in the mother's life that, that Nora discovers. Um, but the writing is just powerful. It, it just carries you along. You can just sit back, and she just takes you on a ride. It, it's very smart. It gives you lots to think about. But it's, uh, yeah, it, you really get to know these people. Yeah, all about the nature of celebrity and, and how mm-hmm. people deal with that. Yeah. Um, just kind of reading a little bit about the book. Uh, I, I'm no producer or, or showrunner, but it sounds like one of those books that could be made into some sort of, of, of spectacle one day, right? Yeah, like yeah, TV or movie. That. Like it just sounds sure. like something that, that really just has such such a drama that will drive through it. Mm-hmm. Um, we're going to bring things a little bit closer to home now with an yeah. author that I don't think needs much of an introduction at all. Yeah, uh, Tell us about this, Peg. Uh, well, this is the new one by local writer David Bergen. So this is a book of short stories. It's called Hear the Dark. Short stories, it's got a one novella, so one longer story in there. 
Um, he uh, won the Giller Prize a few years ago for the time in between. Yeah, I was going to um, say the, the Giller Prize uh, listed on the Governor General's, a winner of the, the Margaret Lawrence Award, and let's not forget, perhaps most importantly, multiple <laughs> McNally Robinson Book of the Year Absolutely. awards for David Bergen. Absolutely, and very worthy. Yes. Uh, his last book was The Stranger, which I thought was fantastic. I thought it was going to get more, more attention nationally. Um, but uh, this new one, I mean, talk about a good writer. He's just a master of the sentence. Uh, the man can write. Um, and so you are like, I just get mesmerized by, by the writing itself. But then I think the confidence he has in the writing just allows him to get into th these people's lives. Um, it's really at the level of character. You really get to feel what they're going through. Um, the stories uh, Hear the Dark, it follows, that's kind of the th one of the themes, I guess. Um, this, the parts of our lives we tend to keep in the dark, uh, desires and feelings and fears and things like that. So it's, it's getting a little bit below the surface, but it's set in the prairies. It's not that far below. And 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 it and yet it's a short stories. I mean, the one mm -hmm. novella, but but short stories. And actually, mm -hmm. just this past week, uh, Maestro Daniel Reiskin of the Winnipeg Symphony Orchestra was coming in, and and, and we were chatting off the air about um, he. Uh, uh, a big reader, but very interested in short stories, ah. right? And how much you can say in so little and how that kind of mirrors a musical language as well. You don't always need these grand pieces of music yeah. to say a lot. You can say so much in a little as well. And so yeah. uh, nice to be able to dive into that, uh, sort of a different yeah. turn for David Bergen there. And we should talk about his event. It's, uh, let's tell us to talk about the event. Next Wednesday, March 11th at 7 p.m. So he'll be at the store uh, telling telling you all about it. Oh, perfect. Mark mm -hmm. it on the calendar. Mm -hmm. uh, Wednesday, the 11th, David Bergen back at McNally. Uh, this next book, uh, not for the faint of heart, I don't <laughs> think. Uh, uh, brain and brawn. Oh. You're going to you're gonna need some some strength to lift this one, Chris. Yes, challenging myself again. I was joking. <laughs> I brought a book on physics last week or last uh, month, and I'm bringing a book on economics now. now right, this, take it away. I'm just going to let you go on this one. Yeah, yeah. Uh, this is a book called Capital and Ideology. It's by Thomas Piketty. Now, in 2014, Piketty made made a huge splash with a book called Capital in the 21st Century. And when I say huge, I mean 700-page hardcover book on economics. Huge. That, that is a splash. It, it did. And it, it argued that capital, i.e. wealth, uh, attracts capital. So um, the more money you have, the more money you accumulate. And yeah, the rich get richer. That's exactly what, yeah. it, uh, what it means. And uh, But we sold an astonishing number of copies. Uh, we did, the marketplace did, North America did. This was a 700-page book on economics. And it's unbelievable how well it sold. So now he's You didn't know about this huge market, Chris, for, <laughs> this, for these 700 pages? Yeah, well, there you go. And he's back now, Thomas Piketty. And he is back. He is back, and he's uh, introducing the concept of ideology to capital. So capital tends to accumulate. That's what explains explains the inequality, the wealthy inequality we see in the world. Now he's arguing that ideology, and by that we mean power, is also part of the story. And, and he talks about it as story. The, um, the world is the way it is because this is the story we tell ourselves. This is what we say it should be. It doesn't have to be that way. This is all man-made or, or human-made. Um, we could change the story, um, but... Uh, but by doing that, I mean, we have to change the stories we listen to, the stories we tell ourselves. And uh, um, yeah, so if we want to change mm. the world, we have to change the stories, which is, uh, of course, how I see things. I see, see the world as a, a collection of stories. And uh, I think the world is changing. We're listening to different ones. So Piketty says uh, we've. Uh, we got to do that in economics. Oh. As he says, don't leave economics to the economists and the politicians. <laughs> well, it affects all of us, doesn't it? It does. Uh, so, I mean, that uh, a, a thick offering, <laughs> to say the very least. But yes. based based on his past past book, yeah. I mean, it, it, yeah. it works. And obviously, and, it translates to people. And it is much more understandable than you might think. You could be daunted by it. But if you just get into it, he makes... He, he, gets into philosophy and and uh, literature and he brings in his ideas he's as i say he's very aware of story so he's telling a story it's just yeah there's some data and facts there too but uh but yeah, it's very compelling, at yeah. least to me. Uh, physics last month, economics this <laughs> month. Chris, <laughs> I don't know gonna what you're going to be doing next month, but uh, look, looking oh, forward to it. We've got some... one more suggestion for March. Yeah, uh, no. Tell us about this one. This book, a bit of a big deal. It is a big deal, and I uh, I was lucky enough to get on it very early. It's it's Say Nothing by Patrick Radden Keefe. It came out in hardcover. I, it was highly recommended from a sales rep of ours, and I took him uh, seriously and started reading it. Um, it's the subtitle of it is called A True Story of Murder and Memory in Northern Ireland. It opens in 1972 Belfast with the story of a widowed mother of 10. She was literally dragged from her house in front of her children. Her children were clinging to her legs as, as these masked intruders dragged her out. She was never seen again. And the, nobody would talk about it for decades. Uh, hmm. 
Um, and so, and this was the troubles. Um, the uh, this is one individual story that uh, that Keith tells, but his power is in his journalism. He's really t- gathering up the stories that make up uh, make up this big story. Uh, we listen, or we uh, get to meet terrorist Dolores Price, who's barely out of her teens. She's this teenager then. She's mm. going around planting bombs for the IRA. Uh, of course, Jerry Adams, who ultimately negotiated peace. Um, so by getting towards these individual stories, we also get a sense, real sense of the motivations and the hatreds, the underlying causes and all the suffering, which would otherwise you'd stay at a distance sometimes when you're reading history. And this book, you do not get to stay, keep your distance. You gr- really get to understand both sides of it and, uh, and what was going on in this, in this mess. Uh, I, I didn't think I was interested in uh, the Irish Troubles. But this book was just so well written and so compelling that yeah, uh, yeah it was Should one of the best was. books I read last year. And um, it noted uh, best book of the year according to uh, the Wall Street Journal, uh, mm-hmm. EW, The Economist, The Chicago Tribune, GQ, Slate, NPR. The list goes on and on mm-hmm. and on. And of course, recommended by McNally. Yes, Robinson. and I should say that the reason I'm talking about it is it's just out in paperback, and now it's one of my what to read. So it'll be on my uh, specific what to reads that we put on display in the store. Oh, fantastic. Uh, Chris, always a pleasure seeing you. Some Thank great you. suggestions uh, this month. As always, we'll have them up on the website, classic107.com. You can, of course, find them in What to Read through McNally Robinson Booksellers. Always great seeing you, Chris. Thank you, Simon.